You know, we've all been told that about nine inches is the perfect barrel length to complete that powder burn for the 300 blackout cartridge, but is it the perfect barrel length for the ideal velocity? Let's find out and test a bunch of those lengths today. Welcome back everybody to Classic Firearms. We're out here at Take Aim Training and Range here to bring another exciting video. You've seen our videos covering, well, nine millimeter, 223, 308, out of different barrel lengths, different velocities. Well, we're gonna do that same thing today with 300 Blackout. In honor of our current giveaway, the Sugar Weasel, we want to test different barrel lengths to see what type of different velocities that we're gonna get through the 300 Blackout uh, cartridge. And again, big shout out to Unlimited Ammo who's sponsoring the giveaway. They're not only, well, providing the ammo for this video, but they're also providing 300 rounds of 300 Blackout in conjunction with the Sugar Weasel. So thank you, Unlimited Ammo. And with that being said, we are shooting some 147 grain full metal jacket boat tail today. And we're gonna see just what type of velocities we get out of the five inch or five and a half inch uh, Sig Rattler, the seven inch Sugar Weasel. Uh, then we've got the seven and a half inch Christensen Arms MPP bolt action. That'll be pretty fun. And you'll notice too that yes, we have the Cherry Bomb by Q on all of these guys because we're gonna try shooting them both unsuppressed and suppressed with the Trash Panda. Not sponsored by Q, we just had one of these laying around and figured it'd be kind of fun. But we've also got the Surefire SPS that we're gonna try out on the SIG here, but we've also got the eight inch arrow build of mine with the Yankee Hill machine suppressor. I'll remove the rail so we can shoot it both suppressed and unsuppressed. Unless we shoot these suppressed, and there's not much of a difference, then I'm not gonna take the time to shoot them to remove the rail. I'm being honest with you guys. The Sigum CX Virtus. This right here is like, this, this is what I think of when I think of almost the perfect 300 blackout gun. If you disagree with me, you're probably wrong and you should let me know why down in the comment section, all right? Uh, but anyway, nine inch barrel on this guy. Then we got a 10 inch Diamondback 300 blackout and then a 16 inch LWRCI 300 blackout, no. It's not piston driven, it's DI. Okay, I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. We've got the chronograph set up here. Let's go ahead and make ready all these guys and let's get some velocities. So starting off with the Sig Rattler five and a half inch barrel, we're gonna be running 10 rounds through every gun, through every barrel length. And then uh, on those that we can suppress, we're gonna run 10 rounds suppressed and unsuppressed. So starting with the five and a half, five and a half inch Sig Rattler, let's go ahead and do this. Remembering that cherry bomb there, definitely going to want eyes and ears, folks, because that thing is concussive. All right, let's do this. Did I already make ready? Nope. Let's do it. Shot number one. 1068. Wow, my ears are already ringing. All right, shot number two. 1084. Shot number three. 1094. Number four. It says 1094 again. Shot number five. 1071, number six, 1069, nice. Number seven, 977, number eight, 1073, number nine, 1098, number 10, 1041. Gosh, dang, my ears are ringing. All right, so 10 rounds suppressed with the five and a half inch rattler. Shot number one, 1074, number two, 1058, number three, 997, number four, 1088, number five, 1069 getting smoked out, number seven, 1061, number eight, 1058, number nine, 1050, number 10, 1087, God dang. Woo. So with no suppressor, the Sig Rattler in its five and a half inch barrel was getting at 1,067 feet per second. With the suppressor attached, uh, somehow the average after 10 shots was less at 1,059 feet per second. <sighs> That's pretty negligible though. I think that is not that big of a difference. So we're gonna try that again, but with the seven inch Sugar Weasel, first of course going unsuppressed. And why was it that we put the cherry bomb and all the all the short guns granted it comes with this but all right let's do this shot number one 1102 number two 1150 number three 
1123. Number four, 1108. Number five, 1111. Number six, 1105. Number seven, 1131. Number eight, 1092. Number nine, 1150. Number 10, 1115. All right, let's go ahead and put that suppressor on it. Shot number one suppressed with the sugar weasel. 1168, number two. 1127, number three. 1089, number four. 1143, number five. 1104, number six. 1146, number seven. 1171, number eight. 1109, number 9, 1133, number 10, 1074. Whew. Now we went in the opposite direction. Unsuppressed with the sugar weasel, we got 1,119 feet per second, and suppressed, 1,127. So it's like, okay, so not that big of a deal. Now, my initial theory was, screw it, let's just shoot all suppressed because it's 300 blackout and that's just a lot of fun. But then the next gun up is the seven and a half inch Christensen Arms bolt action. So I wanna know if we're gonna see much difference out of a bolt gun. So why the heck not? We're here, we got the time, we got the ammo and we got a suppressed and unsuppressed gun. We, let's just do it. Starting unsuppressed with the Christensen Arms 300 blackout MPP seven and a half inch. Shot number one, let's do it. 1190. Shot number two. 1146. Number three. 1152. Number four. 1125. Number five. 1132. Number six. 1168. Number seven. 1101. Number eight. 1160. Number nine. 1122. And number 10. 1127. Shot number one, suppressed. <laughs> 1184, number two. Look at the, you see the perfect little smoke ring? All right, number two. 1138, number three. 1129, number four. 1174, number five. 1160, shot number six. 1137, shot number seven. 1130, number eight. Look at the little smoke rings, man. 1148, number nine. 1126, and number 10. 1191. So first of all, the smoke rings are cool. Secondly, the Christensen Arms MPP is a phenomenal little bolt gun. Throw the silencer on there, and this thing is an awesome, awesome little, oh, it's just a great bolt action gun, and this, this action on it, super freaking smooth. I love this thing. Okay, unsuppressed, 1,152 feet per second. Suppressed, 1,152 feet per second. There was no difference between the two after 10 shots and averaging them out, both suppressed and unsuppressed. So I'm not taking the rail off of my arrow here. Let's just go ahead with the eight inch guy and hop right into it. Shot number one, suppressed. Well, that's shot number one. 1193, number two, 1170. Shot number three, 1185. Number four, 1202, shot number five, 1196, shot number six, 1186, shot number seven. Duplicate, 1186, shot number eight, 1180, shot number nine, 1166, shot number 10, 1229. Okay, nine inch SIG and CX Virtus with the SPS 300 by Surefire. Let's do it. Shot number one, 1236. Number two, 1217. Number three, 1249. Number four, 1227. Number five, 1265. Number six, 1236, number seven, 1155, number eight, 1265, number nine, 
1256, number 10, 1279. 10 inch Diamondback. The DB15 chambered at 300 blackout. Let's do it. Shot number one, 1252. Number two, 1241, number three, 1256, number four, 1194, number five, 1253, number six, 1262, number seven, 1253, number eight, 1288, number nine, 1317, number 10, 1293. 16 inch LWRCI 300 blackout DI. Let's see how this guy does. Shot number one, 1422. <laughs> Shot number two, 1383. Shot number three, 1379. Number four, 1448. Number five, 1377. Number six, 1463. Number seven, 1399, number eight, 1443, number nine, 1407, number 10, 1427, and obviously the fastest. <laughs> okay, so on today's episode of Classic Farm Science Experiment, we have discovered that from the five and a half inch all the way to the 16 inch here, we had a total of a 352 feet per second deviation or difference between the two. Getting there took a little bit of time, but we broke it all down. And keep in mind too, we're not a science channel per se. We didn't run hundreds of rounds to get an, a much more precise velocity. Uh, we're a gun channel that's bringing you as much information as possible every single day. So don't judge us too hard. Oh, and at no cost to you. Now, if you wanna take a deep dive onto at least suppressor science, check out Pew Science. Uh, they take a little bit more of a deeper dive, get into the specifics and nitty gritty of stuff, and it's pretty fun, so check that out. Okay, now with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into each gun, the velocities, and the differences between each. So the five and a half inch Rattler here, again, we shot it suppressed and unsuppressed with the Trash Panda by Q. Unsuppressed, 1,067 feet per second. Suppressed, uh, 1,059 feet per second. Average of 1,063 feet per second. That increased to the seven inch Sugar Weasel. We have the unsuppressed 1,119 feet per second, suppressed 1,126, not that big of a deal, 1,123 feet per second. So only a 60 foot per second difference between these two. Okay, now something that's interesting because we're already in all three different games here. Just by chance, what we had laying around at the warehouse and in the video room, we've shot uh, DI guns today, bolt gun and piston driven guns. Uh, so how much of a difference do those make on velocities? Well, we've kind of tested that theory before too. It, it doesn't, as far as I could tell. Again, we're not a science channel, but as far as I could tell out here being the trigger puller, it doesn't really change much. So don't think we screwed you over on that. Okay, now the Christensen Arms MPP. Uh, the seven and a half inch gun, the difference between the seven to seven and a half inch, we're looking at about uh, 29 feet per second. Not that big of a deal, right? So unsuppressed, 1,152 feet per second. Suppressed, also 1,152 feet per second, giving us an average of 1,152 feet per second. Okay, cool. Now, coming up to the eight inch guy, the error precision build of mine here, where did that get us? Well, not much of a difference either. Suppressed is all we did because we didn't see much of a difference in all of these being suppressed or unsuppressed. Uh, 1,189 feet per second. So the difference is about 37 feet per second between these two. Okay, so again, we're not seeing major jumps here. Now from the five and a half, you know, to the seven inch, you know, we did see a jump of 60 feet per second. Uh, the increase to an eight inch gun, only 37. But where we start to see a little bit more here is well, you'll see. So the eight inch guy, again, 1189, 50 feet per second increase to the nine inch gun. Nine inches at 1,239 feet per second with the Surefire SPS 300. Cool, all right, Sig, I see you. And then the 10 inch Diamondback, 1,261 feet per second. So 22 feet per second difference between these two. Is one inch that big of a deal? <laughs> In this case, not really. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, now, 
where we start to see a rather large jump when it makes sense because now we're changing the difference in barrel length by six inches between the 10 inch Diamondback and the LWRCI here with a 16 inch barrel. Our average velocity for this guy was at 1,415 feet per second with an increase of 154 feet per second from the 10 inch. So obviously, obviously we're seeing a increase in velocity as we often do, as we always do pretty much uh, with the longer barrels. However, by how much is really what it comes down to. And it really does find that sweet spot again between do you, the overall difference being 352 feet per second from the five and a half to 16 inch, that's not that big of a deal to me. Granted, depending on what the ammo is that you're running, again, we were running the 147 grain FMJ uh, boat tail by unlimited ammo. Thanks again, guys. So if you're running more subsonic ammunition, uh, of course, you might have greater differences especially being suppressed, right? Uh, if you're running a little bit more hotter stuff, you might have a greater difference because even though you still typically get about your full powder burn on 300 blackout between that eight to nine inch barrel length, or at the, I should just say eight to nine inch travel, uh, you will still see an increase in velocity in those longer barrels due to pressures building up over a period of time and then getting a little bit more spin on that bullet to provide a little bit more velocity downrange too. So. Again, not a science channel, just pointing out the facts that we discovered here today. Hopefully this answered some questions to you guys about what's the perfect barrel length. If you're going for absolute velocity and is true to pretty much every caliber that we've tested so far, go with a longer barrel. But if you want something that maybe you're gonna keep suppressed all the time, go with something a little bit shorter and then you don't have to worry about having pretty much a musket that you're shooting with because the SPS here, as you can tell, is what, maybe a seven inch? somewhere in there suppressor so you're adding that length to the end of your barrel already so wow that would be a lot if you had a 20 inch right so just keep that in mind okay so with that being said what were some of the biggest surprises by you guys what did you think down below I, for a 22 foot per second difference, I don't think I would take a 10 inch. I think I would probably keep it in the nine inch ballpark just because knowing me, I'm gonna have a silencer at the end of my gun all day, every day. So I'm gonna try to give myself as much of an advantage and try to keep it as compact as possible. So even might skirt down to the eight inch, because again, we're not talking huge differences between velocities between each gun. But I don't know. I'd probably go with the eight inch, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. It's probably why I did go with the eight inch because that's my build. <laughs> but anyway, let me know again what you guys think below. And yes, this not including this, this time, I'm sorry, but this is our current giveaway the Sugar Weasel by Q. And you'll notice this one's pretty freaking dirty, all right? We've been shooting the crap out of it, so this one's gonna be staying in the video room. Congratulations to our winner for getting a brand new Sugar Weasel out of the box with the Trigicon RMR and Scalar Works mount. There was not much more we really needed to do to this gun. It's a cool package, and that's all you need to know about it. 30 round mag that it's gonna come with as well. So head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries. Don't forget to utilize the code word weasel to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. Don't miss out on this guy. I'll see you down in the comment section before. Stay tuned for our next classic firearms science experiment. And let me know which caliber do you think, not only do you wanna see tested next, but which caliber do you think would actually slow down after a certain barrel length? I'm gonna say 45, I think 45. It's already fat and slow. And uh, what are 1911s, like five, six inch barrel? You got the commanders that are like four, four and a half, whatever that might be. So like a five and a half inch barrel will probably start slowing down, <laughs> right? Anyway, back to back uh, World War Champs there. Let me know down in the comment section, which caliber do you think would actually start to slow down after a certain barrel length? Which calibers do you want to see us test next? As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you guys next time at classicfirearms.com and stay tuned for another classic firearms science experiment coming soon.